until we have a better understanding and a better consensus of what the threat is, we will not be able to respond and develop a coherent strategy to confront the threat and hopefully ultimately defeat it. If you don't know what the threat is, you've got lots of disagreements as to what the tactics will be that you will use. Uh, a lot of the discussion of what the tactics are uh, came out uh, and whether they were appropriate or inappropriate started coming out during the Bush administration, the, the, the second term of the Bush administration. Uh, it's where the American people became uh, educated on the term, you know, learning about Guantanamo, perhaps black site prisons, who would have ever thought, you know, enhanced interrogations, the, uh, you know, you predator drones, uh, you go through all of these kinds of tactics that were used, and the, you know, the Patriot Act, FISA, you know, all of this stuff made it into uh, made it into the media, and it made it into the media with a, a long, cons you know, without, without having a long discussion of why are these things, why were these things put in place? How are they being used? What are the kind of results that we're getting from them? And if we don't use them, what kind of information will we lose? And what may the potential consequences of that be? And for many of these things, how did the American public first learn about them? They learned about the process not through a, a process of engagement. They learned about the process. They learned about these issues through perhaps you know, not a great, effective way to bring out dialogue. Uh, they learned about them through leaks. You'd wake up in the morning, you'd open up a newspaper, you'd turn on 24-7 cable news, and there would be a, a, a snippet about this is going on, or that's going on, and, you know, and those who supported the programs uh, would try to spin them in a way to make them look as positive as possible. Uh, and the consequences of not doing them uh, make them look as negative as, make them, you know, would, not doing that, you know, we would have this. Those who were opposed to the programs, typically the ones who were leaking the information on these things, would put them in the worst possible light, saying these things, you know, they're anti-American, you shouldn't be doing them, and those kinds of things. And we never, we never had the discussion uh, about the tactics what is appropriate, what is within our values, and what is not within our values. Let me give you one example that uh, I, I personally find uh, somewhat troubling and one that you know, I find surprising is not getting more discussion uh, in the media today, and I can't quite figure out why. How many of you have heard about enhanced interrogations? Okay. Enhanced interrogations were uh, in, interrogations techniques uh, to the extreme were used, I, I believe, on three individuals uh, shortly after 9-11 to try to elicit information from them. Uh, they were stopped in, in the latter portion of the Bush administration. Uh, they'd been condemned by the Obama administration, uh, and I believe that the people who may have been involved in those are still potentially being evaluated as to whether they are being, uh, whether they are going to be uh, potentially prosecuted under the Obama administration. So we've gone from doing them to the potential now where those who did them at the direction and the leadership uh, of the political uh, elite, um, you know, may now be prosecuted. So you know, you, you've gone from one extreme to the other. The how many of you have heard of predator drones? Okay. Predator drones are this great little invention of, uh, of the military. Uh, they are unmanned. Uh, they fly five, 7,000 feet, although there's lots of different configurations of what exactly these predator drones are. Uh, and they were first developed primarily for, well, they were first developed uh, 
only for surveillance, to give us an idea as to, you know, in, on, on the battlefield, uh, you've got this plane flying at 5,000 feet. It's not very big. Uh, enemy probably can't see it. They can't hear it. Uh, but it's got great technology on place, it's on board, it's in real time, so it's much more effective than a satellite, which may only pass over once every uh, 10 or 12 hours. Uh, and so, and you can steer this thing directly to where you want it to be. You can have it be uh, hoovering uh, over that area for, you know, 8, 10 hours or whatever, so you get a really, really good, good picture of, of what's going on on the ground. Fascinating technology. And as they're reviewing the technology, someone comes up with a bright idea that says, you know what? We ought to put a missile on this. Put a bomb on it. Laser-guided bomb. We can put one drone over here. We can shine the laser to where we want it, uh, to what the target is. The other drone can come, can drop the laser-guided bomb, and boom, it hits the target. Amazingly precise. Amazingly devastating. Uh, as to what they can do. Not a value judgment. It's, my next statement is not a value judgment. But it's a discussion that we should have. Like I said, there were a lot, there, there was a, a serious discussion and debate, very bitter, about enhanced interrogation techniques, whether that was something that America should or should never have done. Last week, the, uh, the President's National Security Advisor said, we have the right and what we will do to keep America safe is to put in place and use predator drones with this killing capability basically anywhere where we need them. And I'm sitting there thinking about this, and it's like, wow. There was such a debate about enhanced interrogations, which I think is a very worthwhile debate to have. The outcome of a Predator drone dropping a missile, dropping a bomb, is 5, 10, 15, 20 people killed based on an evaluation of a group of people gathering signals intelligence gathering human intelligence, eyes on from a predator drone, and someone making the call that says, those 20 people sitting around that bonfire tonight, sitting around that fire in a remote area in Pakistan or under the new guidelines uh, or the new doctrine that's put in place, we can fire a hellfire missile into that, uh, into that camp, and the outcome will be that 5, 10, 15, 20 people will be killed. Should we have the same discussion about that policy as what we had about enhanced interrogations and decide, you know, are, is that essential, is that necessary, is that the American thing to do? We need to understand what the threat is, we need to understand what techniques and what tactics we can use to keep America safe. We also have to decide, you know, what's our role in encouraging freedom, democracy, representation in the U.S. versus security. America needs at this point is the, the line that, that we used to use is that politics stopped at the water's edge. 
didn't mean that, and what it meant is that when America moved beyond domestic policy, and when we moved into the areas that were very, very complex, that were very, very hard, that were long-term problems, that required long-term strategies and long-term commitment to going a direction. Remember, we had that, it took us 45 years for the Cold War. But there was a consistency of vision, there was a consistency from Republican to Democrat administration as to how we would confront it, how we would contain it, and how we would defeat it. And yes, it doesn't mean that we agreed on every tactic, but overall, there was a recognition that this was a threat. And we debated within a, a narrow framework of how we would respond. Today, what we are doing, today, what it calls for, for us to redefine American leadership, and it is absolutely essential that we get some clarity on this. We are still engaged in a war in Afghanistan. We are still engaged in a war in Iraq. We are still having troops, you know, with what's going on in Libya and these types of things. When we have our most precious resources, our young men and women, situations where they can be killed and are dying on a regular basis, it is important for us to have that civil dialogue to set aside partisan issues, to set aside party labels, to get a consensus as to what the threat is, what we will do to contain it and confront it and defeat it. How we are going to promote and balance off the trade-offs between freedom and security. What our relationships will be with our long-term allies, people like Israel. Uh, and what our relationship with Israel will be versus the desire to have a lasting peace in the Middle East. Calls out for leadership, calls out for dialogue, and calls out for bipartisanship for us to move forward. Once we accomplish that, once we have the leadership, the partisanship, and the dialogue, hopefully out of that we will see a consensus that will not only enable us to move forward, whether it's the next Obama administration, whether it's the next Romney administration, or whether it's the next Rick Perry, or whatever the next administration will be, but hopefully will provide us with the framework to move forward for an extended period of time so that we can put some certainty into it, that we can give certainty to our friends as to where we stand, and perhaps more importantly, that we can also give certainty to our enemies what we will do to contain, confront, and defeat them. You know, that is what American leadership needs to be, that it, what, it, what it has been in the past, and what it needs to be in the future. It will not be easy. It will be hard. But it, the unique kind of threat that we face today, it is what our foreign policy and what American leadership and what the American process calls out for. Leadership, dialogue, bipartisanship, to redefine America in the future. It is an opportunity that only comes along, only comes along every so often. This is the opportunity for us to do it. This is the opportunity that calls for that type of a response. A civil, in-depth dialogue about hard problems. And when, as we do it on foreign policy, and as we leave partisanship at the water's edge and present a bipartisan focus to the rest of the world, America can reestablish and restore its place as a leader of free-loving people across the planet. Thank you very much for allowing me to share some thoughts with you.